So this is Ruth Hazelton here from uh, Hidden Culture blog and I'm based in Melbourne on Wurundjeri country and I'm talking today to a uh, singer songwriter, um, Irish Australian and all around fantastic woman Anya Tyrrell. Thanks for joining me today Anya. Thanks Ruth, fantastic woman back at you too. Um, we're getting together to have a chat today because I've been watching a little bit of what's been happening for Anya online in the last couple of weeks and I just wanted to talk about it um, and give Anya a chance to talk about her music and her writing and, and the, the conflict that can happen when you um, write about things that, that, that run very deep culturally, particularly in Australia. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, um, well, I'll start last year. Last year, Anya released um, an album called Return to the Sea. And part of that album for me was a real um, statement about the similarities between uh, Irish Indigenousness, if there is such a thing, uh, Irish mm -hmm. Indigenous identity, but also Australian indig Indigenous identity. And it was a real um, eye-opener and, and something that, that forced me to sit down and think about it for a long time. Um, and a few weeks ago, Anya released a, a single called We Call You Now. Um, and it was a song from an audience perspective that really, uh, I guess, challenged people to, to think about the similarities or challenged Irish Australians to think about the, the similarities between colonialism their history mm. and Indigenous history. Um, and there has been quite a backlash to that for Anya online. And we'll get to that in a minute. But um, do you want to maybe speak to um, why you wrote the song? What made you sit down at the moment and need to kind of get this out? Mm. I, it definitely came from the subconscious, as in it wasn't something that I consciously sat down to write. Um, but my experience here, having been here for 10 years, and I suppose finally becoming comfortable in being who I am here. I think when you immigrate, I, I know when I immigrated to Australia, you do try to fit in and you don't want to like ruffle any feathers and you kind of just like are learning the lay of the land. And, and culturally, I was really, it's so different to Ireland that I kind of was trying to find what it was about this place that was um was cultural um and i i think the track has come from kind of a culmination of 10 years of of trying to decipher what it is that is here and um an irish experience that has been here for 200 and something years and what that means in the context of 60,000 years of indigenous culture here and um, as an Irish person as well, touring around and, and you're, you, you know, you're on stage for, you know, half an hour, an hour or something. And, and a lot of people will have come and seen you just because you're Irish, for example, or that they're trying to identify with their Irish culture in some ways as well. So a lot of the conversations I've had over years of, of, of that as well, kind of also just erupted in me after um uh, it was after the black lives matter march here in byron bay when i was asked to sing uh one of my songs from from return to the sea i was asked to sing in this house at the at the protest and i was very honored um and i i got backlash from that first of all that was the first thing that that kind of came at me and um and, and a lot of it came from people who have followed my career and who have enjoyed my music as a certain type of Irishnessness. Like they, they kind of had me in this box of what they expected me to be as Irish and didn't like me um, stepping out of that in their identity of what that means in Australia. And, um, you know, uh, had 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 some things to say about the fact that I was supporting a Black Lives Matter march and it kind of just was this fire that came up inside me <laughs> and I think it's just the culmination of the 10 years and then this final event just like came up inside and I was like do you do you not understand who you are in this equation and what your history has been 
uh, your ancestral history before you got to this place and then your history in this place and then what that means in the landscape of the 60,000 years worth of history that was here before. Yeah, it, it's really, really visceral stuff, isn't it? That the, mm. it, It's really hit a nerve with people. And um, I might read, if that's okay, from one of the mm. quotes that I pulled off, off your Facebook <laughs> page. <laughs> but it seems to be fairly... Um, Fairly representative of the kind of argument, and it's a long mm. one, so stick with me. As a person of Irish ancestors, I have this to say. My people were dispossessed of their land, denied education, the right to speak their own language, and the right to survive without penalisation. Sent to Australia as a penalty for being hungry, starving, and in many cases as children. My cause is one with the Indigenous people of this land. I bear no guilt for their dispossession, and I will hold none. My people have no native title, no recognition, no recourse. There are no reparations and no memory, but I am a proud Australian. I live in a nation that supports the downtrodden, educates everyone, provides free health care, supports and uplifts all. We are all Australian. We hold dear qualities of mateship, having a go and giving a fair go for all. Um, that, that really kind of illustrates the confusion in, mm. in the thinking there, I think, um, around identity. And I find it fascinating, too, that Australian Irish people um, feel that they share a culture with you and Irishness and a history that you feel quite apart from. Yeah. Um, yeah. And part of that, too, uh, we had a conversation a few weeks ago, was a phenomenon that you refer to called the green dollar. Can you talk <laughs> a little bit about... What it is to be Australian and, and, and the expectations that, that Irish Australians have of you as an Irish woman. Yeah, I, I think I broke, I broke a code and I think that that's, that's what the anger is about. You know, I think that um, in America and Australia, there's so many generations of Irish that came here and, and as, as they said, dispossessed from their own land, there's, there's, there's many stories of, of not coming here free willingly and the same to America. And then they still hold, um, they still hold an identity back to Ireland. And um, what's happened is that Ireland has moved on, right? But they've kind of stayed in the generation or, or the thought process of when they left. And in that, as an Irish person traveling here and especially playing music here or in the entertainment industry i think at all whether it's film or or music or whatever you have what i have found is this kind of um generation of of irishness that wants to keep you still in that in that place because that's what they remember as ireland that's what their grandmother talked about as ireland that's what that is and there is um a phenomenon among you know Irish musicians that you can earn a lot of money in Australia and Ireland and America in particular those two countries by playing into that right so so if you don't if you don't rock the boat if you play a few of the classics that they like and if you if you um if you in a way kind of massage that that you know, there's a very healthy income to be made in both countries with, with that, and and I I've seen that in Australia massively, um, from St Patrick's Day through to you know Irish festivals that pop up here and there. That the sense of culture doesn't ref reflect what Ireland is at the moment, and you know Ireland has its own problems and its own issues, and it's not perfect. I'm not looking back at Ireland with this like perfect lens of everything's going great over there. But in the past, you know, decade, we've really grown as a country and changed, and and we are recognizing a lot of the things of our past that and rewriting the story. I suppose remembering is you know something that our president Michael D Higgins, I just adore about what he said here in Australia when he toured here and as well as in Ireland, you know, remembering is bringing back in the members of, of that memory, you know, you're remembering, you're actually bringing people into that. And, um, and yeah, that I think in what I've 
what I found with this track and also standing up at the march with that and other people that have been vocal about my support of indigenous rights here is that they they are not they're not equating the two like the version of colonization that they have in their head of Ireland which is what led them to here for example a lot of them they can't say look at the indigenous experience and say oh that's really similar whereas when I toured Ireland last year with Emily Waramara um you know she's telling stories on stage about what what it's like over here as an indigenous person and everyone in the audience all the Irish people were like afterwards they're like talking to her about the famine and they're talking to her about you know Brehan Law and all, all these things of Irish history because they could recognize in her story what we battled with for 800 years you know but but here I I've I mean I, I can't say that of all Irish Australians there's a lot of incredible Irish Australians I've met that that have have not only from this track or in this house or different conversations I've had they've come to this stuff in their same way that I have and definitely I would say the native if you want to call or the indigenous of Ireland that have moved over here in the last decade as well are definitely on the same page but to say you hold no guilt for the displacement of the people here is really feeding into the colonized narrative you know that that is feeding in to the narrative um that that perhaps their ancestors were sold in coming out here in the first place do you know what i mean absolutely and and of course we we both agree on this um a few years ago i heard emily speak with ancestress um at the the inaugural women in music awards and and what blew my mind when they were talking too is about th this idea of continued colonialism that it's not actually an apology for something in the past it's something that's continuing while indigenous mm. people are um, treated in the way uh, while we disrespect um, traditional grounds traditional owners um, so we're not even talking about something in the past. We're talking about something that's ongoing, which which mm. is part of the Irish story, and as you say, um, is being addressed in Ireland culturally at the moment. I but mean, even, Australians, sorry, even when well, I just to point that out, you know, even when Emily arrived in Ireland, my dad, who's visited Australia, you know, twice in his life, he's he's not Australian or ha hasn't lived here or anything, you know. The first thing he said to Emily was, you know, the morning after she wakes up was like, I'm sorry on behalf of white people for what's happened to your, your people. He holds guilt as a white man in Ireland for what has happened to you in Australia, do you know? And um, I mean, my dad is like an incredibly big empath and a huge heart, so I can see where that comes from. But, but to say that you can't see how, as you're saying there, these modern colonized structures are still making you think that way or, or react that way is, you know, yeah, it's troublesome. <laughs> it is. And there's a couple of things in that. There's uh, like, say your child breaks their leg. Um, I can say to you, I'm sorry that happened. Um, and there's an apology that, that can occur like that. It's not like... <laughs> I'm not sorry that happened to your child because I didn't personally push them over. <laughs> um, and there's that, that kind of thinking that goes along. But what also interests me about some of uh, this narrative too is this thing that's not just about Australian identity or Indigenous identi identity, but also Australian identity that we are... Um, you know, that we support the downtrodden, we educate mm. everybody and we provide free health care. Look, our, our health care is, is miles better than America. We, we know that much. And there are, you know, I just, I do not see Australia as being a very uh, equal society. And I, I don't think we do actually provide equal mm. services to everybody in this country. And it's, it's, really interested me over the years to see uh, immigrant cultures really take up this this colonial narrative of um, free for all fair go for all uh, we support everyone have have a go mate 
kind of attitude. And I remember you saying to me that that was quite obvious to you when you first landed in mm. Australia. And I don't want to put you in a position of Aussie bashing, but no, no, I think no. Australians <laughs> do need to hear how we appear from the outside. I think we think we're very <laughs> egalitarian and clearly we're not. Yeah, you know, uh, when I did arrive, that was definitely, you know, the first two years, that was like massively the narrative of what I heard from people just being like, oh, you've arrived in basically the promised land. <laughs> like, Look at our beautiful beaches and our barbecues and aren't you so lucky to be here? And, it, you know, I was like, I left um, in the wave of immigrants that came over with the global financial crisis and there really wasn't work in Ireland and it was a very bleak future I was looking at for myself and my young family so when someone said that to me you automatically have this sort of gratitude for Australia for opening up the gates to to Irish people um but in the, you know in in the way they spoke to me I heard other things as well you know I was a white-skinned English-speaking person and it was very easy to um to get uh to get um a visa to come here you know and it was like wow okay so it's 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 not as easy if you're not from you know if you're not from an english speaking country with white skin um and there was this uh term which i hated you know the expat uh term because and i was allergic to it as soon as i arrived i had i hadn't heard it before so i had no idea what it was and then i kind of equated it with english people because it just seemed to be english people that took on that um identity but you know expat in i've always called myself an immigrant here because you know expat kind of puts yourself a little bit above immigrants because you came here for um economic reasons and it also has it's loaded with this like choice that i could go home at any stage right <laughs> whereas immigrants you get this idea that you're here you're kind of you've left everything and you're here till you die you know what i mean um and and i i found that really interesting in the narrative of english and irish people that also called themselves expats when i came it kind of was loaded with this you know we're the kind of the privileged ones that we could go, we can leave Australia at any stage if we want to, you know, whereas um, immigrant had a, had a different connotation to it. But there is definitely a, um, a very, uh, um, you know, positive sort of look at how amazing Australia is, aren't we? I mean, look at how well we look after each other. And, you know, it took me, it took me probably two years of living in a suburb outside of Melbourne and I was in Ocean Grove um, before I was really even aware that indigenous culture existed within Australia and not just up in like within other parts of Australia than just the Northern Territory because that was kind of the narrative I had heard in Ireland before I'd even come here. Um, from backpackers or different people that had traveled around and you know spoke spoke about that um, and and that as well is kind of worrying that it would take kind of two years and, and me actively trying to find out about the place you know I'm I come from a traditional Irish music background massively into my culture and my history and my language and so I'd be the type of person that would be looking for that as well you know <laughs> it wasn't like I was just like straight into the you know singlet on the beach and like yeah <laughs> I've made it do you, but, you remember, know, I, do you remember on you the moment that you actually made that connection between indigenous culture or the moment yeah, of I'm, time yeah I did that there was a, I was teaching and very, very early, early, I had to transfer my qualifications over here and very early in the training there was, um, there was a video that was kind of showing different kids experiences going to school, you know, like kind of a white privileged kid in Sydney versus, you know, a kid out bush, I think here up near Nimbin, there was a kid and then um, a few indigenous kids as well and just seeing the difference in the education system and that was kind of the first thing that um that I was aware of and then acknowledgement to countries in a few of the schools that I was teaching in but um it was really it really hit me when I was 
put on a double bill with um, beautiful Yira Mall. He's from um, Arnhem Land and was living in Geelong at the time. And um, then in Ararat, they rang me up for NADOC week and asked, would I sing on a double bill with um, with Yiramal and at first I kind of was like you know I'm not indigenous like <laughs> I'm Irish and they were like oh no it's just you sing in language and he sings in language and we just think it'd be a really nice um, combination and, and Yiramal played before me and, and I actually could barely get on stage because I was I was just in floods of tears and it was the first time I had heard I don't, I, it was kind of like the first time I heard Australia, like I heard it speaking from, from the traditional landowners, I suppose. And I heard it, I heard stories of culture and home and connection. And, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's the same as how I feel walking around the Burren in Clare, you know, or that's the same as my dad's stories or my grandmother's stories or, um, yeah and and that that was the first time that it hit me hit me really deeply you know and from there from there in i suppose i i i i tried to seek out as much knowledge as i could on it it's yeah and it's something that i've come very much to associate with with your music um Mm. even though you have that irish you know the the australianism in your music to me is, is very much about indigenous music and and that's a lot part of your journey part of how you've presented it um Mm. but it strikes me too when you're talking about being an expat versus um an immigrant you've kind of landed in this uh unfortunate position that yasmin abdul mcgee did years ago with her tweet um about anzac day um and i think online vitriol is a, a thing of its own um we know uh that, that quite often within Facebook groups, there'll be a, a stacks on moment where somebody will point to somewhere on the, on the web or somebody who needs taking down and will point mm. all of their followers in that direction. And that's, that's obviously happened to you. Um, but it's just interesting to me, um, this difference between an, etpa, a, a, an expat and an expat and a migrant where you've ended up more of a migrant role with people telling you to go home even. Um, and, yes. and, you know, it, it's this brand of racism in Australia, which, you know, I don't think is fundamentally, you know, part of Australian culture, but it, it, there is a streak of this and it's a very dangerous wow. streak and it's a streak that we've seen more and more of since Pauline Hanson and, and John Howard, certainly. Um, give us an idea of, of the kind of things you've been uh, accused of and... Uh, <laughs> words that have been used about you in the last fortnight yeah it, it's interesting because you know the track it, it it's basically just calling on the irish australian community to stand in solidarity like i'm not actually um saying anything about anyone's you know politician or like uh any hero from history or like i'm not taking down um taking down anyone's uh like uh idea of who they are it's just we've got to this point in our history right where we've had this past the indigenous um community are speaking about the same past past that's that's present right now and um what a force we could be if we united basically is what it's saying and and it's looking towards a like what australia could be i mean and that you know and as someone who could move home at any minute like i don't need to give any thought as to what australia could be actually (laughs) you know it's not my job like but i i see it and i i see the Irish community and how in a way they've been displaced from their identity and all these really important things and and if you could call on those really guttural instinctual and you know because 14 generations of DNA is, is where your memory your memory is carried in your DNA for 14 generations so like anyone that has identifies at all with sort of um 
Irish heritage, if you go back far enough, most Australians would have some of it, you know. <laughs> and um, so I found it really like, you know, the fuck off, go home, narcissistic, bitch, witch, venomous, um, you know, evil, dark spirit, demonic. That was, <laughs> that was a new one. Um, I found those like really kind of interesting that I'm, I'm not actually saying anything really horrid in the track. Like it's not like I'm, I'm just really calling people around a fire to be like, right, this is our experience. This is your experience. How about we like move forwards and make something better? Um, yeah. And, and then some of the other ones, I suppose, like I followed you for, this many years and supported your career and basically it's kind of summing it up being like you know now you go and do this you know <laughs> it's like did you did you not hear you know like i mean in the very first track on my very first album that i ever released is bail all the people which talks about rising everybody up at the same time and not leaving anyone out so it's kind of like you know I mean it wasn't overtly about one race or another or anything it was more from the stories of ships coming over here actually and that the Irish a lot of the times were on the bottom bottom decks and and then would have been you know more privy to being uh, death and disease and all sorts of stuff you know and that's actually where that um, track came from after reading a story to my daughter actually called The Australian Girl. There you go. It was even like, it's an Australian story <laughs> about immigrant girls that, different types of immigrant girls that came over. Um, so yeah, it's it's like, have, if you've been following me for this long and this many years and supported my career, I'm pretty sure you would have like picked up on the social justice stuff by now. <laughs> You know, like I, I haven't been quiet on it. Um, Maybe it says something more though on your too about you know this ownership of you as an Irish person. Mm. The people really don't hear um, what they don't want to hear. You know, um, mm. and I've actually found you know that, that there's a line in the track, and a few people have actually messaged me and they're like, "You're not talking about me, are you?" And I'm like, "Well." I'm not directly talking about you, but I'm talking about this thing that I can tell you every single Irish artist that has ever played over here would have got. And that's after, and I get it. Like literally, even though I just launched this track and talked about it on stage, I still get it after every single show. I've, I've done a couple of shows since it's been released. And it's someone comes up to you and they're like, my great great grandmother was from Cork. And it's always Cork because the famine ships left from Cork. So there seems to be this like m much um, higher percentage of people that through ancestry.com or wherever end up the last record of someone leaving Ireland is from Cork. So they, they hold on to the magic Cork, right? <laughs> I'm going to get murdered for saying this now. <laughs> Like it is sort of a joke between a lot of Irish that are, that are, that are out here that it's like oh did they say they're from Cork yet yeah, from Cork yet yeah. um, it's just this like um, they, they, once they say that to you I've I've had loads of incredible conversations with lots of people with amazing heritage from Cork and all over the place and so I don't say this to sound like egotistical or patronizing which are other two words that I've been accused of this week um it, it's this claim to a history through ancestry.com or wherever it is that they're trying to cling on to and in that moment when you're on stage they're projecting everything that they want about that identity onto you I'm, I'm kind of like this blank this just this blank Irish slate right and um it doesn't really matter what I say or 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 what I do on stage they've they've had their cup filled and I love I love that I can do that for so many people but then there's also this other side of it whereas they they they're trying to take I don't know my a beautiful indigenous friend of mine Delta K um spoke to me about it because she experiences the same thing with with um with people who haven't grown up with indigenous culture and then find out again through something like ancestry.com that 
way way back they have some and it's this she calls it cultural farming where they just come up and they want to take take something of you to take away that day to fill up this void of culture which is exists all over australia and there's a different way to do that you know like there's a different way that's like a reciprocal conversation where i don't feel like i'm being like like farmed of of who i am after a show do you know what i mean or after a conversation or or after a festival or or after different things there's beautiful and i've had so many of those experiences here where you sit down and talk to people and 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 there's this beautiful exchange and they genuinely want to know something but it's it's it definitely rests with people i think who don't know how to fill that void and at that moment i am that I am that person for them. Amazing parallels there, actually, mm. and, and, and probably a lot why you're, you're sharing um, this heritage in common. I think we'll um, go toward closing now, and I'd love it if you would um, sing us that song in this house. But before you do, um, maybe a little bit of a background too, um, that, you know, this conversation is also going on between you and Indigenous people and uh, mm. I understand that Indigenous people have been quite supportive of your message mm. and your uh, your voice. It, it's something that I have found really difficult as an artist to talk about Indigenous history in Australia without being the I'm the white person so I'm going to take up the conversation space mm. kind of thing. So it, it's a it's a dance and it's a very respectful moment that has to go on and I think watching you navigate that has has been really amazing for me to watch but also um and that's why I really like this song in this house but you've obviously delved deep into indigenous culture and the, and the people mm. that, that are in your local community especially um maybe just let us know some of the feedback that you've had from them about your messaging and and the processes of communication that you've gone through there when you're writing about indigenous australia yeah i mean i i think um thank you first of all because i i do i you know i i understand that dance and i i think the thing that i would always say to anyone wishing to you know um be there as an ally is just sit and listen and wait you know and and that's actually kind of the message of in this house um uh, and and i think that you know you can't just like um anything right we're not going to solve the problems of the world in this generation probably do you know <laughs> but how we behave shows the next generation which shows the next generation so um every little thing i mean you don't have to be um the one singing at a black lives matter march or releasing a track like i've released because there's hundreds of little moments that come along in life that that you are just as powerful um in doing those things and i i think after lots of little moments of of holding space and being there and learning and and sharing i mean i, I think that's that's where i've um come i suppose into the closer relationships that i have is that i share some of what i value as culture and some of what i am and my history and and who i am and and i think that for anyone wishing to enter that space that it's really important to you know i mean what i say and we call you now is remember who you are because until until you can feel into that and and do your own work and feel all those things how how can you stand in allyship for someone else who's trying to express how they feel and and what's their experience has been like um yeah so i i suppose working with the banyara culture collective of up here it's been years of just turning up at their events and being there in support of nadoc week or survival day or or lending a hand when they're doing like a grandmother's weaving circle or you know like they've just been opportunities where i've said yeah i'll be there what do you need um 
and then when it came to releasing this track it was you know I mean I, I sent it to all of all of them first being like what's it like uh, this thing has come through because because they all saw the backlash that I got for standing up on such a peaceful beautiful that's that's the thing is like anyone that was at the march in Byron on that day it was the most beautiful sharing of culture that happened there was nothing violent there there was nothing aggressive the message was so stunning like I I have goosebumps thinking about how beautifully the young people and the older people and everyone spoke on that day. It was just gorgeous. And so for them to see me getting the backlash from it, I suppose they, they understood where the track came from. And, and also I suppose between Dobby and Emily Wiramara, who I've, I've both, I've worked with both of them and then Banyara Culture Collective, they were like, this actually is a part of the conversation that a white person can have that isn't being had, you know, like I can't speak from the indigenous perspective. Like I can't speak from a white Australian perspective either. You know, really my, my culture lies on the other side of the world and I can only speak from what I observe from having been here and seeing how it all plays out. And sometimes it takes someone that's not from that place but knows enough about it to kind of look at it and be like all right <laughs> there's a few things kind of out of place here that um so I think they just appreciate that there's that that conversation has started because I, I really don't think that Australia has reconciled it's 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 colonial and convict history you know they, they go together you know and they, there's this kind of um lumping of anyone that's white into the that the you know what do they call it like the first whatever wave of settlers you know and that's not the truth you know but the the colony has to let you think that that's the truth for the colony to survive <laughs> and i've had enough years and education in Ireland and a university degree in 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 literature and English to understand what the colony can do to a mindset so yeah so to be able to speak about those things I suppose who else if I'm not going to speak about it like who who else is going to and um I think the support was there because it's a conversation I'm not trying to take the space of an ind indigenous person speaking about this I'm trying to add another perspective that may uh, enlighten or, or bring a different level of understanding to white Australians that indigenous people might not be able to access my platform can access that you know mm, absolutely and it's it's a really important beginning of, of this narrative it's only very new and, and very recent <laughs> I'm, I'm so this was in this house was a uh, you know pre precursor to it in a way you know yeah that's it and and that was the first single wasn't it that you mm. you released from your album last year return to the sea so i might um as you're getting your gear out um <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to um Thanks, to talk to me and um yeah i hope you're good it's mm. been a, a big mm. week mm. For on your online yeah. and, and in, in the blog i will uh be posting uh the youtube clip so that you can look oh, at the, thank you that song and i'll probably I'll, I'll post this clip as well so you can get a bit of anya anya is also got a patreon going if you want to support her as an ongoing artist and she does weekly gigs the the virtual cups of tea which she's now become quite famous for <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but it did. <laughs> Another thing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Thanks, Ruth. I really appreciate, and and I do really appreciate your, I suppose, um, uh, dissecting all that down to like a narrative because it really did help. When I like when another comment would come in or another comment, I'd be like. Oh, yeah that's what Ruth said that's that, that's <laughs> that's that thing that's that fair go Australia thing again oh there it goes again there it goes oh yeah that's it again <laughs> and it helps put it into perspective 
Um, all right. So in this house, I wrote um, after a conversation with another beautiful indigenous artist I've toured with, and his name is Dane Kennedy. He's um, from Wagga Wagga, but a Nyumpa man. And um, Dane was explaining to Mark, my producer, um, about a welcome to country, and, and he likened it to a knocking on a door. How you wouldn't just rock up to someone's house without knocking, that you'd knock and wait to be invited in and then after all that's been done you know you sit down you have your cup of tea and your chats like this and I, it resonated with me so deeply after he said that because you know in Ireland there wasn't a lot of knocking either and um, I, I think it's a beautiful it's a beautiful ceremony to do no matter where you are to acknowledge where you are and um, and ask for me, perm permission to be there, you know. I can hear an engine rumbling for miles away. Sitting here, I can feel someone's on my ground. To Troy's hands and knees, cause I already know that someone is coming near. What I want to know is what are you gonna bring across the seas? What song are you gonna sing into my breeze? Tell me what shoes are you gonna. Yes, if you make it all the way up to my ears, you're just gonna have to sit and wait and oh, if the land I feels you true, oh, the gate is always open up for you, it will open up for you, it will open up for you. Open up for you, it'll open up for you.